Welcome to QuickLit. In today's video, we embark on a transformative journey into the world of mindfulness and meditation as we explore the profound wisdom found in Mindfulness in Plain English by Banti Hinepala Gunaratana. Join us as we delve deep into the pages of this timeless book, uncovering the secrets to inner peace, self-discovery, and a more mindful life. Whether you're new to mindfulness or a seasoned practitioner, this summary video is your gateway to unlocking the transformative power of mindfulness. Let's dive right in. Chapter 1, Meditation, Why Bother? In the opening chapter, Banti Gunaratana introduces the concept of meditation and why it is worth pursuing. He explains that meditation is a powerful tool for transforming one's mind and cultivating inner peace, clarity, and wisdom. The author emphasizes that meditation is not a religious practice but a practical and universal approach to understanding the mind and achieving mental clarity. Chapter 2, What Meditation Isn't In this chapter, Banti Gunaratana dispels common misconceptions about meditation. He clarifies that meditation is not about escaping reality, suppressing thoughts or engaging in mindless relaxation. Instead, it is a method for developing awareness and insight into the workings of the mind. Chapter 3, What Meditation Is The author defines meditation as a systematic approach to observing the mind and its activities. He introduces the concept of mindfulness, which involves paying focused and non-judgmental attention to the present moment. Banti Gunaratana explains that mindfulness meditation is about observing thoughts, sensations, and emotions without attachment or aversion. Chapter 4, The Benefits of Walking Meditation Banti Gunaratana discusses walking meditation as an alternative to seated meditation. He highlights the benefits of this practice, such as improving concentration, balance, and mindfulness in daily life. The chapter provides practical instructions on how to perform walking meditation effectively. Chapter 5, Where to Meditate In this chapter, the author explores suitable locations for meditation practice. He suggests finding a quiet and comfortable space, free from distractions. Banti Gunaratana emphasizes that meditation can be practiced anywhere, as long as you can maintain focus and mindfulness. Chapter 6, When to Meditate the author discusses the importance of establishing a regular meditation schedule. He recommends choosing a time when you can meditate consistently and without interruptions. Banti Gunaratana encourages practitioners to find a balance between meditation and daily responsibilities. Chapter 7, What to Wear, What to Sit On, and Other Practical Matters. This chapter provides practical advice on the physical aspects of meditation. Banti Gunaratana discusses clothing choices, sitting postures, and the use of cushions or chairs to support a comfortable meditation practice. These practical considerations are intended to create a conducive environment for mindfulness. Chapter 8, What to do with your body. Banti Gunaratana discusses the physical aspect of meditation. He emphasizes the importance of adopting a comfortable yet alert posture. The author provides detailed instructions on sitting positions, hand gestures, madras, and how to maintain an upright and relaxed posture during meditation. Chapter 9, What to do with your mind. In this chapter, Banti Gunaratana explores the role of the mind in meditation. He explains that the goal is not to suppress thoughts but to observe them without attachment or judgment. The author introduces the concept of watching the breath, a fundamental meditation technique that involves focusing on the natural rhythm of the breath as a means of anchoring the mind in the present moment. Chapter 10, The Practice of Mindfulness The author delves into the practice of mindfulness, emphasizing the need for consistent and patient effort. Banti Gunaratana encourages practitioners to cultivate mindfulness in everyday activities, not just during formal meditation sessions. He introduces the idea of, bare attention, which involves observing experiences without conceptualizing or labeling them. Chapter 11, The Four Foundations of Mindfulness Banti Gunaratana introduces the Four Foundations of Mindfulness, a traditional Buddhist framework that serves as a comprehensive guide to meditation practice. These foundations are Mindfulness of the body, observing bodily sensations, postures, and movements. 
Mindfulness of feelings, recognizing pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral sensations and emotions. Mindfulness of mind, observing thoughts, mental states, and patterns. Mindfulness of dhammas, investigating the nature of reality, including impermanence, suffering, and non-self. The author provides insights into how each foundation contributes to self-awareness and insight. Chapter 12, Mindfulness in Everyday Life. Banti Gunaratana underscores the importance of integrating mindfulness into daily life. He suggests practicing mindfulness during routine activities such as eating, walking, and even while waiting in line. The author highlights the transformative power of this practice in fostering greater presence and awareness in all aspects of life. Chapter 13, What's in it for you? The author addresses the potential benefits of mindfulness meditation. Banti Gunaratana explains that through consistent practice, individuals can experience reduced stress, increased emotional resilience, improved concentration, and a deeper understanding of the nature of reality. He encourages readers to explore these benefits through their own practice. Chapter 14, Common Hindrances in Meditation Banti Gunaratana discusses common challenges and hindrances that practitioners may encounter during meditation. He identifies five hindrances, sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry, and doubt. The author provides guidance on recognizing and overcoming these obstacles to maintain a consistent meditation practice. Chapter 15, Meditation, The Timid Little Mouse Banti Gunratana discusses the nature of meditation and the common misconceptions that can deter individuals from practicing. He likens the initial stages of meditation to the behavior of a timid mouse, often jumping at the slightest noise or distraction. The author emphasizes the importance of patience and gradual progress in developing mindfulness. Chapter 16, Awareness and Wisdom. The author delves into the relationship between awareness and wisdom in meditation. Banti Gunaratana explains that mindfulness and insight go hand in hand. Through sustained mindfulness, practitioners gain insights into the impermanent, unsatisfactory, and non-self nature of reality, which leads to wisdom and greater understanding. Chapter 17, The Process of Meditation. This chapter provides a step-by-step -step guide to the process of meditation. Banti Gunaratana outlines the stages of meditation, including focusing on the breath, sustaining mindfulness, and developing concentration. He encourages readers to follow these stages as they progress in their practice. Chapter 18, Postures and Places for Meditation. The author offers practical advice on selecting appropriate postures and meditation environments. Banti Gunaratana explains that meditation can be practiced in various postures, including sitting, walking, and lying down. He also highlights the significance of finding a suitable and quiet place for meditation. Chapter 19, Walking Meditation Banti Gunaratana provides detailed instructions on walking meditation, a valuable complement to seated meditation. He describes the mindful walking process, from lifting the foot to taking steps and maintaining awareness of each movement. Walking meditation is seen as a way to cultivate mindfulness in motion. Chapter 20, More on Walking Meditation Building on the previous chapter, the author explores the benefits of walking meditation in greater detail. Banti Gunratana discusses how this practice can deepen mindfulness, improve balance, and enhance concentration. He encourages readers to incorporate walking meditation into their daily routines. Chapter 21, The Basic Method The author presents a simple and effective method for mindfulness meditation. Banti Gunaratana guides readers through the steps of observing the natural breath, noting the inhalation and exhalation. This foundational practice helps train the mind to stay focused and cultivate mindfulness. Chapter 22, What to do with your body. Banti Gunaratana revisits the physical aspect of meditation and provides additional guidance on maintaining a comfortable and stable posture. He emphasizes the importance of relaxation and balance in the body to support meditation practice. Chapter 23, More About What to Do with Your Body Banti Gunaratana provides further guidance on the physical aspects of meditation practice. 
He discusses the importance of finding a posture that is both relaxed and alert, one that supports mindfulness without causing discomfort or strain. The author emphasizes the need for balance and comfort in the body to facilitate effective meditation. Chapter 24, What to Do with Your Mind The author explores the role of the mind in meditation and offers insights into managing mental distractions. Banti Gunaratana encourages practitioners to be patient and persistent in their efforts to maintain mindfulness. He advises acknowledging distractions without judgment and gently returning focus to the meditation object, such as the breath. Chapter 25, Awareness versus Concentration Banti Gunaratana distinguishes between awareness and concentration in meditation. He explains that awareness involves observing the present moment without attachment, while concentration entails focusing the mind on a specific object. The author emphasizes the importance of balancing both aspects in meditation practice. Chapter 26, Mindfulness versus Concentration Building on the previous chapter, the author further explores the relationship between mindfulness and concentration. Banti Gunaratana explains that mindfulness is the underlying quality that allows for clear and non-judgmental observation, while concentration helps stabilize the mind. He underscores the need for a harmonious blend of both in meditation. Chapter 27, The Five Mental Hindrances Banti Gunaratana discusses the five common mental hindrances that can arise during meditation, sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry, and doubt. The author provides insights into recognizing and overcoming these hindrances, which can disrupt mindfulness and concentration. Chapter 28, Hindrances versus Defilements The author distinguishes between mental hindrances and defilements in meditation. Banti Gunaratana explains that hindrances are temporary mental obstacles that arise during practice, while defilements are deeper-rooted impurities that require more profound purification. He encourages practitioners to address both hindrances and defilements on their meditation journey. Chapter 29, Mindfulness of Breathing Banti Gunaratana introduces a specific meditation technique known as, Mindfulness of Breathing. He provides a detailed step-by-step -step guide to this practice, which involves focusing on the natural breath and observing its sensations. The author emphasizes the importance of mindfulness of breathing as a foundational meditation technique. Chapter 30, Present-Centeredness The author explores the concept of present-centeredness as a key aspect of mindfulness meditation. Banti Gunaratana encourages readers to let go of attachment to the past and future, focusing instead on the richness of the present moment. He explains that the practice of present-centeredness is a powerful tool for cultivating mindfulness. Chapter 31, Walking and Thinking Banti Gunaratana discusses the relationship between walking meditation and thought processes. He explains that walking meditation is not about suppressing thoughts but about observing them mindfully while walking. The author encourages practitioners to allow thoughts to arise and pass without getting caught up in them, emphasizing that this practice enhances mindfulness. Chapter 32, Thinking and Repetition The author addresses the repetitive nature of thinking and the habitual thought patterns that often dominate the mind. Banti Gunaratana emphasizes that meditation allows individuals to observe these thought patterns without attachment, helping to break free from the cycle of repetitive and often unproductive thinking. Chapter 33, The Good Heart Banti Gunaratana explores the development of a good heart or loving-kindness, metta, as an integral aspect of mindfulness practice. He discusses the cultivation of compassion and goodwill towards oneself and others. The author suggests that metta meditation can complement mindfulness meditation, fostering a sense of interconnectedness and compassion. Chapter 34, Mental Hygiene The author delves into the concept of mental hygiene and the importance of purifying the mind from negative thoughts and emotions. Banti Gunaratana explains that mindfulness serves as a tool for cleansing the mind and maintaining mental well-being. He encourages practitioners to be vigilant in recognizing and addressing unwholesome mental states. Chapter 35, Taking Stock Banti Gunaratana discusses the process of taking stock of one's life through mindfulness. He encourages individuals to reflect on their actions, intentions, 
and values. The author suggests that mindfulness can help individuals make more conscious choices and align their actions with their values and aspirations. Chapter 36, Time to Get Enlightened In this chapter, the author introduces the ultimate goal of meditation and mindfulness practice, enlightenment or liberation from suffering. Banti Gunaratana explains that mindfulness can lead to profound insights into the nature of reality and the self, ultimately leading to liberation from the cycle of suffering, samsara. Chapter 37, The Ultimate Mental Discipline The author discusses mindfulness as the ultimate mental discipline, capable of transforming the mind and leading to profound awakening. Banti Gunaratana emphasizes the potential for liberation through mindfulness and encourages practitioners to persevere on their path toward enlightenment. Chapter 38, The Benefits of Loving-Kindness Building on the earlier discussion of metta, loving-kindness, Banti Gunaratana explores the numerous benefits of cultivating a loving and compassionate heart. He explains that metta meditation can lead to increased happiness, improved relationships, and a greater sense of interconnectedness with all beings. Chapter 39, A Few Good Points Banti Gunaratana emphasizes the significance of mindfulness practice by highlighting a few key points. He reiterates the importance of consistent effort, patience, and the cultivation of a peaceful and calm mind. The author encourages readers to persist in their practice and maintain their dedication to mindfulness. Chapter 40, Developing Wisdom The author delves into the development of wisdom through mindfulness. Banti Gunaratana explains that mindfulness leads to insights into the impermanent, unsatisfactory, and selfless nature of reality. These insights, known as wisdom, arise from direct experience and deepen over time with continued practice. Chapter 41, Cutting Through the Ten Fetters Banti Gunaratana discusses the concept of the ten fetters in Buddhism, which represent the obstacles to liberation. He explains how mindfulness practice can help individuals progressively overcome these fetters and move towards enlightenment. The author describes the stages of liberation and the role of mindfulness in this process. Chapter 42, The Joys of Mindfulness the author explores the sense of joy and fulfillment that can arise from mindfulness practice. Banti Gunaratana discusses the happiness that comes from cultivating a peaceful mind, overcoming suffering, and experiencing moments of insight and awakening. He encourages readers to appreciate the joys of mindfulness. Chapter 43, Meditation and Society Banti Gunaratana addresses the potential impact of meditation and mindfulness on society. He discusses how the practice can lead to more compassionate and ethical behavior, improved relationships, and a greater sense of interconnectedness. The author envisions a world in which mindfulness contributes to social harmony and well-being. Chapter 44, Where Do I Go From Here? In this chapter, the author offers guidance on the next steps in one's mindfulness journey. Banti Gunaratana encourages practitioners to continue their meditation practice, deepen their understanding of mindfulness, and seek guidance from experienced teachers or communities. He emphasizes the ongoing nature of the mindfulness path. Chapter 45, Going It Alone The author acknowledges that some individuals may choose to pursue mindfulness practice independently, without formal guidance. Banti Gunaratana provides advice for those who prefer a self-guided approach, emphasizing the importance of self-discipline, self-reflection, and consistent practice. Chapter 46, Mindfulness, The Path to the Deathless In the concluding chapter of this one-tenth section, Banti Gunaratana reflects on mindfulness as the path to the deathless, a term used in Buddhism to denote liberation from suffering and rebirth. He underscores the transformative power of mindfulness and encourages readers to continue their practice with dedication and determination. Chapter 47, Nirvana Banti Gunaratana delves into the concept of Nirvana, the ultimate goal of Buddhist practice, which represents liberation from suffering and the cycle of rebirth. He explains that mindfulness is a key tool on the path to Nirvana, as it leads to insight, wisdom, and the direct experience of the deathless. Chapter 48, Further Benefits The author highlights additional benefits that arise from consistent mindfulness practice. Banti Gunaratana discusses how mindfulness can lead to greater clarity of mind, 
improved concentration, enhanced creativity, and a deep sense of inner peace. He encourages readers to appreciate these profound transformations in their lives. Chapter 49, The Meditation Posture This chapter revisits the importance of maintaining a proper meditation posture. Banti Gunaratana provides detailed instructions on finding a comfortable and stable position for meditation. He emphasizes the role of the body in supporting mindfulness and concentration. Chapter 50, The Basics of Mindfulness The author returns to the basics of mindfulness practice. Banti Gunaratana reiterates the importance of mindfulness in observing the breath and cultivating awareness of the present moment. He offers practical guidance on using the breath as an anchor for mindfulness. Chapter 51, The Role of the Teacher Banti Gunaratana discusses the role of a teacher or guide in meditation practice. He explains that a skilled teacher can provide valuable guidance, support, and insights for students. The author encourages those who have access to a qualified teacher to seek their guidance on the path of mindfulness. Chapter 52 Lessons from the Retreat The author shares lessons and insights from a meditation retreat experience. Banti Gunaratana highlights the intensity and transformative power of retreats in deepening mindfulness practice. He discusses the challenges and rewards of retreats and encourages readers to consider participating in such experiences. Chapter 53, The Beginning In this chapter, the author reflects on the beginning of the mindfulness journey. Banti Gunaratana acknowledges that the path may seem challenging at first, but with consistent effort and patience, individuals can make progress. He encourages readers to take the initial steps toward mindfulness with an open heart and mind. Chapter 54, What is There to Lose? Banti Gunaratana discusses the fear of change and the resistance that can arise when individuals contemplate the practice of mindfulness. He encourages readers to reflect on what they have to gain from mindfulness and to overcome any hesitations or doubts. The author emphasizes the transformative potential of mindfulness in leading to greater happiness and freedom from suffering. Chapter 55, Sharing Merits Banti Gunaratana discusses the practice of sharing merits in Buddhism, where practitioners dedicate the positive outcomes of their practice to benefit all beings. He emphasizes the altruistic nature of this practice and the sense of interconnectedness it fosters. Chapter 56, The Final Goal The author reflects on the ultimate goal of mindfulness practice, which is to achieve liberation from suffering and attain enlightenment. Banti Gunaratana discusses how mindfulness leads to wisdom, insight, and the direct experience of the deathless, bringing practitioners closer to the final goal. Chapter 57, Acknowledgements In this chapter, the author expresses his gratitude to the individuals and communities who have supported and contributed to the practice of mindfulness. Banti Gunaratana acknowledges the importance of a supportive community in fostering mindfulness and meditation. Chapter 58, Last Word The author offers his final reflections on the practice of mindfulness. Banti Gunaratana encourages readers to continue their journey with mindfulness, emphasizing the ongoing nature of the practice and the potential for profound transformation. He leaves readers with encouragement and guidance to maintain their dedication to mindfulness. Chapter 59, End of Part 1 This chapter marks the end of the first part of the book, Mindfulness in Plain English. Banti Gunaratana concludes this section by summarizing key concepts and teachings covered so far. He prepares readers for the second part of the book, where he will explore additional aspects of mindfulness and meditation practice. Chapter 60, Taking Refuge. Banti Gunaratana discusses the practice of taking refuge in Buddhism. He explains that taking refuge involves seeking guidance, support, and protection from the three jewels, the Buddha, the Dharma, teachings, and the Sangha, spiritual community. The author emphasizes the importance of these refuges in one's mindfulness journey. Chapter 61, Instructions on Meditation The author provides practical instructions on meditation practice. Banti Gunaratana outlines the steps for establishing mindfulness, including finding a suitable posture, focusing on the breath, and cultivating awareness of bodily sensations and mental states. 
He offers guidance on dealing with distractions and developing a regular meditation routine. Chapter 62, Walking Meditation Banti Gunaratana revisits the practice of walking meditation and offers detailed instructions. He explains how to cultivate mindfulness while walking, emphasizing the importance of slow, deliberate movements and staying fully present in each step. The author highlights the benefits of walking meditation for both concentration and mindfulness. Chapter 63, Loving-Kindness Meditation The author introduces loving-kindness, metta, meditation as a practice of cultivating love, compassion, and goodwill toward oneself and others. Banti Gunaratana provides a step-by-step -step guide to metta meditation, including phrases and intentions to repeat to generate feelings of loving-kindness. Chapter 64, No Self or Not Self Banti Gunaratana explores the concept of no self, anatta, in Buddhism. He discusses the idea that there is no permanent, unchanging self or ego but rather a collection of impermanent and interdependent components. The author explains how the realization of no self is a fundamental aspect of mindfulness and insight. Chapter 65, The Final Goal The author reflects on the ultimate goal of mindfulness and meditation practice, which is the realization of nirvana or liberation from suffering. Banti Gunaratana discusses how mindfulness leads to wisdom and insight, which in turn lead to the direct experience of the deathless. He emphasizes the transformative potential of mindfulness on the path to the final goal. Chapter 66, Acknowledgements In this chapter, the author expresses his gratitude to those who have contributed to the practice of mindfulness and meditation. Banti Gunaratana acknowledges the importance of teachers, mentors, and the broader mindfulness community in supporting the practice. Chapter 67, Last Word the author offers his final reflections on mindfulness practice. Banti Gunaratana encourages readers to continue their journey with mindfulness and meditation, emphasizing that the practice is ongoing and requires dedication and patience. He leaves readers with words of encouragement and guidance. Chapter 68, End of Part 2 This chapter marks the end of the second part of the book, Mindfulness in Plain English. Banti Gunaratana concludes this section by summarizing key teachings and concepts covered throughout the book. He prepares readers for the third and final part, where he will delve deeper into meditation techniques and challenges. Chapter 69, The First Jhana Banti Gunaratana delves into the concept of jhana, a deep state of meditative absorption. He explains that jhana arises when the mind becomes fully absorbed in a single object of meditation, leading to intense concentration and bliss. The author provides guidance on how to enter the first jhana, emphasizing the role of sustained attention and tranquility. Chapter 70, The Second Jhana Continuing the discussion on jhana, the author explores the second jhana, which is characterized by even deeper concentration and a higher degree of bliss. Banti Gunaratana explains the progression from the first to the second jhana and provides instructions on how to cultivate this meditative state. Chapter 71, The Third and Fourth Jhanas The author goes on to discuss the third and fourth jhanas, which represent advanced stages of meditative absorption. Banti Gunaratana describes the mental qualities and experiences associated with these jhanas, including equanimity and profound stillness of mind. He offers guidance on entering these deep states of meditation. Chapter 72, Walking in Jhana Banti Gunaratana introduces the practice of walking meditation in jhana states. He explains how individuals can maintain deep concentration and meditative absorption while walking mindfully. The author emphasizes the benefits of combining walking meditation with jhana practice. Chapter 73, Practical Tips In this chapter, the author provides practical tips and guidance for those engaged in meditation and mindfulness practice. Banti Gunaratana offers insights on dealing with challenges, distractions, and obstacles that may arise during meditation. He emphasizes the importance of patience, self-compassion, and perseverance on the path. Chapter 74, The Second Arrow The author discusses the concept of the second arrow, a metaphor for the additional suffering we inflict upon ourselves through our reactions to pain and difficulties. 
Banti Gunartana emphasizes the importance of mindfulness in breaking the cycle of reacting to pain with aversion or suffering. He encourages readers to develop equanimity and acceptance in the face of life's challenges. Chapter 75, The Center of the Hurricane In this final chapter, Banti Gunaratana likens the calm and still center of a hurricane to the inner peace and clarity that can be cultivated through mindfulness and meditation. He reflects on the transformative power of mindfulness in bringing peace and insight into one's life. Chapter 76, Acknowledgements the author expresses his gratitude to the many individuals and communities that have supported the practice of mindfulness and meditation. Banti Gunaratana acknowledges the importance of teachers, mentors, and spiritual communities in fostering mindfulness. Chapter 77, Last Word In this concluding chapter, Banti Gunaratana offers his final reflections on the practice of mindfulness. He encourages readers to continue their journey with mindfulness and meditation, emphasizing that the practice is a lifelong endeavor. The author leaves readers with words of encouragement and guidance as they continue on their path of inner exploration and awakening. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.